Would you like to learn how to make the most delicioso Puerto Rican pani? Well, in this episode of the Lisa D's Delight Show, I'm going to show you how to make a mouth-watering pani or roasted picnic shoulder. We're going to use some sofrito, some cilantro, fresh garlic and onions. I ain't got to lie, Craig. You heard all that thumpity thump crispy goodness? Stop playing. You make your Puerto Rican pani like this. Is guaranteed to be off the chain. Lisa D delight. The noise is in my stomach, so I guess I'm feeling hungry. I click that YouTube Lisa D so I can kill this rumbling. But when I'm in the kitchen, don't know what I'm doing, stumbling. It's time I try to Lisa D delight. Okay, LDD family, let's get into this recipe. As usual, your ingredients and measurements and such will be in the description box below. So the first thing we wanna do is clean off our picnic shoulder with some cool water and vinegar. I didn't pay the mortgage at your house this month, so I can't tell you what to do, but you ever get them breakouts on your face, them little pimples, them little pus bumps on your face that just pop up out of nowhere? Yeah, that's cause you don't clean your meat. Yup, show sure you and it's not cute. Just clean your meats, baby. When in the store purchasing your pork roast, you wanna make sure that it says picnic shoulder. You want a bone-in, skin-on, picnic shoulder pork roast. But if they don't have that, then you can settle for a bone-in, skin-on pork butt. And just because it says butt, no, it's not the butt of the pig. It just happens to be the back of the shoulder of the pig. But a picnic shoulder, is ideal for this recipe. Try to make sure that it has a good amount of fat on it, like not OD fat, but you do want some fat on the um, picnic shoulder because where there's fat, there's flavor. To all my big girls like me, you can take that as a personal compliment. <laughs> Go ahead and pour a little bit more of distilled white vinegar all over the pork roast and don't rinse it off this time. The vinegar is going to help tenderize the meat a little bit. I feel so out of place making this video because I'm not at my house. I'm back home in New York at my aunt's apartment. And so I'm like out of place, but cause I'm from New York, but I moved to Dallas and now I'm back home visiting. And I don't know why I came back cause it's too damn cold, but anyway. <laughs> now we're going to concoct a delicious seasoning paste to make our pork roast all yummified. So we wanna mix some adobo, some sazon, some garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, fresh cracked black pepper, some complete seasoning, and some extra virgin olive oil to a cup and mix it well. So my number one tip to making a super yummy bunny is to put enough salt on this bad boy. Because it's such a large piece of meat, it needs a lot of salt and I use adobo as my salt because adobo is more flavorful. I don't measure because I've been doing this a while, but after you mix all this together, you wanna give it a taste and it should taste extremely salty. It shouldn't be like, oh, this is good. No, it should be like, you wanna spit it out, it's so salty. It should be salty like the daggone sea. That's how salty it should be. All the salt will render out and distribute evenly throughout the meat and your end product will be a nice flavorful pani. It won't be too salty. If you cook your pani and then you taste it and it's like it's missing something, it's because you didn't use enough salt. Trust me, I've made the mistake of not using enough salt and I was pissed. But to give you a little good rule of thumb to go by, whatever your pani weighs, take that weight and divide it in two. So divide it in half and then that will give you the maximum amount of salt in tablespoons that you should use. So an example would be, if your penny is 10 pounds, divide that in half, that's five pounds. That means you should use five tablespoons of salt. But still taste it and adjust to your liking because everyone is different, but I'm telling you, it needs to taste really salty. Next, you wanna juice a fresh orange and two limes and mix that in as well. Stir, 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 until you have a nice, smooth paste consistency. Something just like this. Then we're going to take that seasoning paste and mix it into our sofrito. 
So frito is a blend of garlic, a lot of garlic, cilantro, bell peppers, and onions. I'll go ahead and put my sofrito recipe above. You're welcome. Mix that up until everything is well combined and give it a taste, adjust it to your liking. When cooking, you really wanna taste as you go so that way you can fix stuff before it's too late. But um, taste it and make sure that it has enough garlic because garlic is one of the main ingredients in penne. Next, we're going to separate the fat cap that's right underneath the skin from the rest of the meat. Do this with the tip of a really sharp boning knife or carving knife. Do this part kind of carefully because you don't want to puncture the skin because then it'll make your pani look all ugly. Hispanic families enjoy pani almost every single holiday and so does my family. I'm not Hispanic, but I grew up around them and both my babysitters were Hispanic. So they taught me this super yummy recipe and it's really very easy and very cheap. Kind of like my ex-husband. It's best to use a roaster that has a rack. Like I said, I'm not home, so I didn't have a rack. But if you do have a rack, use it because it's better that the pani is not sitting in its juices and it'll also help crisp up the skin later on. And if you don't have a rack, let me share with you this little rack hack that I found. It was this lady on YouTube. Her channel's called Sense of Edibility. Go check her out, she's really cool. So she made her own little rack by taking aluminum foil and twisting it all up like so. And voila, cool right? Next, we wanna take the tip of the knife and jab holes all over the bani on both sides top and bottom try to go as deep as you can this part is the fun part for me because i imagine this bani is that cheap ex-husband of mine and this is my way of getting him back without going to jail pray for me oh yeah we're making all these slits so that we can put the seasoning paste inside the slits Put a couple of dollops right onto the bunny and then use your fingers and massage it all in. You should use gloves, but I like to be one with my food. <laughs> massage all that garlic and onions all up in your ex-husband's eyeballs and nostrils. I mean, all up in the bunny. My second pro tip for a super yummy pani is to allow the pani to marinate for as long as possible and don't allow the seasonings to escape during the marinade process. Ideally, you wanna let it marinate for three days in the refrigerator, but if you don't have that type of time, then at least do one day. And before you put it in the fridge, you wanna wrap it with plastic wrap and aluminum foil. My production team lost the clip of me doing that part. You just can't get good help these days. So I'm showing you with Sense and Edibilities video so you can see exactly how it's done. You wanna wrap it really, really tight with the plastic wrap and the foil. That way the seasoning is trapped and it has nowhere else to go but to penetrate even more into the meat. So at this point, you really want to suffocate your ex-husband. I mean, bani. <laughs> My third tip to making a super yummy bani is to cook it low and slow. By cooking it at a low temperature for a long time, ensures that the meat won't dry out, which means it will retain its juices and be more flavorful, juicy, and delicious. Preheat your oven to 250 degrees. I like to cook my pork shoulder overnight. So you wanna cook it at 250 degrees for one and a half hours for every pound. So my picnic shoulder was 11 pounds. So I cooked it overnight for 16 hours. But if you don't have that type of time, you can use the quicker method. I was just trying to help your palate. You can roast it at 350 degrees and you would let it cook 40 minutes per every pound. So example, if your pane was 10 pounds, you will cook it for four hours. Rub some of the seasoning on the outside skin as well. 
as it cooks it's going to produce its own liquid but add about a cup of water just to be sure that it doesn't burn then you want to cover it very tightly with aluminum foil but spray the foil first with cooking spray so that it doesn't stick to the skin of the panini and mess up the crispy skin that we're going for and spray the shiny side of the foil because the shiny side is less likely to stick than the other side is and put the sprayed shiny side face down towards the picnic shoulder LDD family you guys are gonna have to bear with me like I said I'm not home so these next couple of steps are gonna kind of be vocal not too much of the visuals I told you my production team sucks move your oven rack to the center of your oven and let the pork roast cook basting it every 45 minutes or so Lisa D, delight. many hours later you'll know it's done when the internal temperature reaches 165 and you also know it's done when the bone becomes loose like grandpa's bowels <laughs> my bad it's a cooking show but when the bone is loose and can easily be removed it's nice and tender and done next we're going to get ready to make the skin nice and crispy for most families the skin is the best part it's really coveted mm -hmm. but first i would suggest taking the pork out and putting it into a new clean pan because we're going to crisp up the skin at a high temperature and the liquid at the bottom might tend to burn out but that's optional if you do keep it in the same pan and you happen to have a whole lot of liquid at the bottom of the pan remove about half of the liquid out before you start to crisp up the skin you can use that liquid to make a nice yummy gravy my fourth and final tip to a super yummy pani is to get that skin all crispy crunchy and delectable and the way we're going to achieve that is by drying the skin salting the skin and then roasting it at a high temperature so take some paper towels and dry off the skin as much as you can and then rub in some of that oily goodness from the bottom of the pan rub some of that grease onto the skin and then sprinkle some adobo all over the dried skin the salt and the adobo will begin to draw the moisture out of the skin to help it crisp up before we roast the pork at a high temperature you'll want to take a look at your pork and assess whether you need to um, cover any spots that are already kind of getting too dark cover them with aluminum foil to protect them from the heat and from really getting you know extra dark bump the oven up to 450 degrees and roast the pork uncovered for about 20 minutes after the first 10 minutes turn the pan around and once the skin is nice and mahogany brown and crispy then you know it's done but for some reason if it doesn't get crispy you can then place it in the broiler to try and get it more crispy but just make sure you watch it closely while it's in that broiler Lisa D, my god forever isn't she pretty isn't she wonderful even stevie can see that thank you to my lord and savior for always blessing me and the ldd family thank you for being the amazing god that you are for always loving us and blessing us we love you and praise you for it before you cut into your pani you want to let it rest for about 30 minutes this pani goes really good with this arroz con dulas that i made it was super delicious You know it's good when your pork got bars. If you do have any leftovers, not likely, you can make a delicious stir fry with the pork by stir frying the pork with some onions, garlic, and bell peppers. Or you can use the meat and top your nachos with it or top some french fries with it. Or you can freeze it for up to three months. So I hope you enjoy and try my recipe and always remember when you cook from your heart with love you can't go wrong thank you for watching god bless you have a delicious and delightful day bye oh yeah hit the like and subscribe button pretty please with a cherry on top damn you make the food so good make sure you like and subscribe damn you make the food so good make sure you like and subscribe
so good Make sure you like and subscribe, brand new nigga And it's so good Make sure you like and subscribe